Welcome back my friends, John from the Live for Wild channel. I'm here with Justin from Phoenix Ammunition. He's going to give us a shop tour. Okay, tell, tell you know, about your company. So Phoenix Ammunition has been in business since uh, August of 2016. Uh, we're here in Novi, Michigan. This is where uh, I was actually born. I've lived my whole life and uh, kind of always had a dream of having a business here in my hometown. Uh, my background is in manufacturing risk management and my uh, younger brother Kyle was working for a, a local ammunition manufacturing company uh, and unfortunately they went out of business and so we had the opportunity to uh, buy their equipment and we discussed getting into business for ourselves. We saw that there was a need in the market for a, a high quality premium uh, but affordable ammunition product for people who are shooting on a weekly or monthly basis, uh, really chewing up the rounds. Uh, we also saw a, a need for good quality and affordably priced self-defense ammunition and precision rifle ammunition, which is uh, some of the phases of our company that we'll be moving into very soon. So uh, my brother Kyle, my father Norm, uh, we all got together and decided to go into business for ourselves. Um, so we are a family-run, uh, family-owned and operated business uh, right here in Michigan. All of us, as I said, we're born and raised uh, right in this area in Michigan. And um, we're trying to bring some jobs to the area, uh, bring manufacturing back to the Detroit area, which I think is an important, uh, an important thing for us in the, in the coming future. How do they get a hold of you? What's your website? Yep. Instagram. Sure. Yep. So uh, Phoenix Ammunition is on Facebook. Uh, we're on Instagram. We have our own website. Uh, it's spelled uh, F E N I X Foxtrot Echo November Irene X Ray. Uh, and the website is phoenixammo.com. Again, we are on Instagram. Uh, we do go to a gun show every weekend. Uh, so we are somewhere in Michigan or the uh, Northern Ohio area uh, every weekend without fail. So you can always find us at a show. Um, you can place orders through our website. And if you happen to be local to the area, you can also come and pick up orders from us directly. We don't turn away uh, walk-in customers. We don't have a, a nice fancy retail storefront, but uh, we always welcome people to come in and check out our products. Uh, always best to give us a call a couple minutes ahead of time, make sure we have what you need. but. We're always looking to serve the market as best we can. Very good. Go ahead. One of the things that we do is provide ammunition to a local veterans charity, uh, Operation Injured Soldiers. Uh, they're out of the South Lion area, and what they do is provide recreational activities for uh, injured veterans that have 80% or more, uh, I'm sorry, 20% or greater disabilities, uh, PTSD. Uh, physical injuries, things like that. So they, uh, every month, have some sort of a activity. It could be uh, doing a, a, some pistol shotgun shooting at a local range. Could be a physical activity. Um, a, a gym that I'm also a, a member of is donating uh, time to train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with them as a way of not only rehabbing their injuries, but uh, being able to be around other people like themselves uh, build the camaraderie, uh, talk about what they've been through, and uh, provide some physical output, which has been shown to help with uh, coping, coping with the, the mental aspects of the things that they've been through. So uh, we've donated ammunition uh, to their cause and, and uh, are looking to get involved with them uh, to a greater aspect as well, donating our time for some of their events. Very, very nice. Okay, this is your this is your brass area. Yeah, this is our uh, brass storage area. <laughs> it's a little bare at the moment, but that's because it's a Friday, and uh, generally we supply or get our brass resupplies on Mondays and Wednesdays. By the end of the week, we're pretty short as long as things are going well production-wise. So uh, we we don't process our own brass in-house. That's not something that we have the we believe uh, the expert. We have the expertise, we don't have the time or equipment to do it the way that we feel is the proper way to process brass. Uh, so we get that done by uh, outside vendors. They have an extremely thorough uh, 
a quality process that uh, is the reason we work with them. So all of the brass gets cleaned, uh, tumbled in stainless media. Uh, at that point, it gets ultrasonically cleaned as well. Uh, that is after the primer has been removed. Uh, the brass gets resized at the case mouth as well as the base. So many of you are familiar with the Glock bulge uh, that's present on a lot of 9mm and 40 uh, brass. So that gets roll formed out on all the brass that we purchase. Uh, all the processing is done on Camdex equipment, uh, which allows it to be pressure tested as it's processed. So it eliminates any split cases, uh, cases with hairline cracks, anything that won't hold pressure gets rejected in the, the processing so that we get brass that is ready to load in, in every regard. It's, it's clean, it's resized. Uh, we also do a secondary resizing on our, we run a resizing die on all of our uh, tool heads to ensure that the sizing is perfect, uh, which is just a uh, kind of part of our the neurotic way we go about quality here. Go ahead. So as you can see, this is our, this is our supply area. Uh, we already talked about the brass in detail. Um, all of our powder, uh, most of it is from Hodgdon. Uh, they're our primary powder supplier. Uh, we find their product to be extremely high quality, uh, burns extremely clean. That's the biggest compliment we get from our customers is uh, they're amazed at how little soot and, and debris is in their gun when they're done shooting even 500 to 1,000 rounds. Uh, so we keep those in a Type 4, type four powder magazine. Uh, we have seven or eight different powders we use depending on the application, slow burning, fast burning, rifle, pistol, uh, etc. Uh, on the projectile end of things, most of what we load is Barry's projectiles, uh, copper plated. Anything that's going faster than 1200 feet per second, we do use a, a real thick full metal jacket bullet uh, so that we don't have any barrel wear issues or letting of the barrel. So 10 millimeter, um, 44 magnum hunting loads. All of our 357 loads are all a full metal jacket, 223 obviously. Uh, we do use Hornaday, Arms Corps, um, Sierra, and uh, Los Bullets uh, as other suppliers depending on caliber and application as well. Mm. On the primer end of things, uh, we again have uh, another Type 4 rated powder magazine where we keep our primers. Uh, primers are all Winchester and CCI. Uh, I can actually show that to you if you don't mind. Just kind of put your money where your mouth is. So everything we use is uh, American made. As you can see CCI in this instance. Winchester here. Uh, we, we prefer to use uh, American made components especially when it comes to powder and primers. Uh, those are the, the real critical aspects uh, of the round. Um, you can look at a Mark 7 auto drives, Mark 7 uh, the Pro, Pro X auto drives. So they run mostly fully automatic. Uh, obviously, you have to refill primers every 100 primers, so. What do you usually get rounds per hour? Uh, Depends on the caliber. Nine millimeter, we can run 2,400 rounds per hour all day. But realistically, you're going to get about 2,000 because yeah. you have to keep slowing and change on primer tubes. We have actually lately been getting some of our brass pre-primed by a company that does nothing but that. So if we get them pre-primed, we can run in almost realized 2,400 per hour. You'll get a couple of stops. Powder checks is really the powder checks slow us down. I can part of our, our quality process. Two, three, you know, we'll get maybe 1,500 an hour. Uh, you, you have to run them a bit slower for those because the bullets tip over easier. And yep. we have a solution for that. We're working on a different bullet feeder that, so that, so that. mimics yeah. the handle movement, right? And and you can see that this cog is actually off, eccentrically offset to perfectly mimic the arm motion. Just like you're pulling on it. And the motor itself is a variable speed computer controlled drive as well so you can see that the, the press will slow itself down at various points uh, in the actual process to account for 
coming down, making sure the bullet is straight, hitting it slowly and pulling up a little bit quicker. Uh, so it doesn't, it's not just running at the same back and forth. And we have the ability to, uh, to adjust those values as well, depending on what we need. So we can have it add hesitation toward the top and that works very well for 223 especially because it, as things rotate, you have the case wobble and what happens is this uh, expander rod will get off center and you'll break something or you'll break the rod or the bullet or crush will crush brass. Right, crush brass. So we can add hesitation on the top. Also, we can add uh, uh, bottom dwell as well. And that is useful for larger calibers where you have a lot of powder draining. You can have it sit there and make sure that everything is fully get drained, charge. get a full charge. And that way it gives the powder a chance to settle before it rotates. And so you don't get as much powder flying up over the top of the case net, especially like with TP3 where you're filling that thing almost to the top. Yep. Or our 357 load has how many, what, 24 grains of powder? You know, we have a 357 load that goes almost 2,000 feet per second. So it's packed in there, and if you don't have some hesitation to let it settle, uh, then you'll have powder all over the shell plate, which gums things up. Obviously, if you lose powder, which is bad, and bad for the quality process. Uh, all of our load data, our load data uh, is in these binders here. So again, as we're setting up the quality process, uh, we know what the minimums and maximums should be. Uh, we keep a production log as we're making it, uh, so we know how many is in each lot. We keep a record of how many rejects we have in a lot, how many get accepted through the quality process, and the quality checks are done uh, with, with a set of gauges, as you can see here. So your load data is, so if you had second shift come in, they would follow this just like an ISO Correct. document. Yep, absolutely. Same. So anybody and then anybody that ran the machine would document it. Absolutely okay. right. So all the load so, data here uh, again, unless uh, we, we that's your Bible. We, this, these are it's like a recipe book. So yep. if, any if you if you follow the recipe, you'll bake a cake as good as Betty Crocker. That's the okay. idea. So yep. any any idiot can pick this up and know what the machine should be doing, and therefore it's repeatable. To, it shouldn't yep. matter who's running 9mm that day, they're all following the same recipe. Yep. Yep. Uh, the production log is a way for me to keep track of inventory, again, how many rejects we have in a lot, how many were accepted, and how we packaged them so that we know uh, how many 50 round boxes we have, how many 500 round bags we made, and everything should line up so it, it allows us to keep our inventory system very sound. Uh, all of the quality, so, so as things get manufactured, uh, there's basically three steps. There's uh, manufactured pre-inspection, there's rejection, and acceptance. So any bin that is containing items that have been manufactured but not inspected get this yellow tag. So these go on the bins that are in front of the machines, as well as the larger bins that we have uh, on the table behind us. Uh, for the lot as it's being run. So the bins can hold between 500, two, 300 and 500 rounds depending on what you're doing. And so in a lot of 10,000, you're changing those bins. So that, that allows you to keep track of what's in the bin. Yep. And in the stage of that. Stage. Exactly, so we know by lot number and caliber and grain what it is, who's running it, uh, when we started running it, what lot it's, it's assigned to so we can keep separate lots like for 223. Uh, we may have two lots in a week, or nine millimeter. We may have two lots in a week, so we can keep those lots separated. Um, I, can, I can tell you're pretty familiar with ISO. Yes, We're, we come from a company that sure. has ISO certified. Absolutely. So. Yeah. So, uh, so you're tracking all your tracking everything, every step, and absolutely documenting it. So as things get checked with these gauges, they then go into an acceptance bin or a rejection bin, depending on. Obviously, they're accepted and rejected. Uh, we use gauges. These chamber gauges are identical to the chamber of whatever round. 40 cal. 40 cal in this case. Uh, we also have backup gauges that we use. Uh, if we have something that's rejected in one of the larger gauges, we have these uh, single backup gauges uh, that we find. I won't say they're a little bit more forgiving, but uh, these are... I would say more akin to like a Glock chamber 
maybe a hair looser than like a Kimber Chamber. So okay. these are by Dylan. Um, we rely on these heavily. These we found to be the best gauges available. So anytime we have an issue, we always double check them. So the single gauges we also have by the machines as we're running lots. Uh, as the machines cranking out rounds, we're pulling a few out of the stream, checking them Just to see if random. there's right random ones, spot inspections. If we see that, okay, this doesn't fit in, all right, do we have to adjust the crimp die? Do we need to uh, pull the seat up a little bit? So you're really watching the quality very Yep, absolutely. I would say in a, in a run, as the machines are running, I, we're checking maybe every one out of 10, one out of 15 as they're being produced, and then those are getting rechecked again. Uh, the nice thing about these big gauges is uh, as we're dropping these in, it lets us see the primers as well. So upside down primers, we can immediately identify those and pull those out um, as a reject. So we are visually touching, touching and seeing every, single, every round. single round that we make without exception. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so this is an example of a, the, a competitor's product we actually bought at a show. Um, you know, I, I went and actually paid the 10, t paid the, the 10 bucks. So you difference. can see the difference here. Uh, uh -huh. Just the amount of dirt and accumulation. Obviously, these weren't tumbled after they were assembled. So, um, much yeah. higher quality, we feel, which is why we like the clear packaging. We, uh, we think it shows uh, the amount of time that we put into our product versus our competitors. Um, I also can't stand the cardboard boxes. They absorb, they absorb moisture, um, which yeah, is big, a problem if you store difference. them over time. Yeah, big difference. You can just see the, the polish, the final polish at the end. Um, so we feel like that's a much better presentation to customers than, you know. This is your, your individual stock. Yeah. Somebody comes in. Yeah, or so uh, we take these to a, a range, uh, or to, I'm sorry, we, we take these to gun shows uh, individual gun customers, shops. gun shops, yep. So uh, people can sell these in a retail environment. We obviously sell them direct as well. Uh, we really like the clear packaging. These are made by a company in Boise, Idaho, uh, Tack Pack. And uh, what's yeah. great about them is it allows us to see the primers as we package. So everything gets a secondary inspection as we are packaging because as we're packaging, we put the ammunition in the box, put the label on, we'll flip it over to put the lot information on the bottom, which gives us a chance to make see sure a bad primer, you a bad see that primer one. didn't somehow slip through so, unbeknownst. So, so another, another, another way to check. check. Exactly, another check and balance. Um, so we make a ton of different pistol calibers, uh, four different bullet weights in nine millimeter, a couple different uh, bullet varieties in 44 mag and 45 cold. Um, every pretty much every caliber that you would see and some of you don't we sell a ton of 10 millimeter um, that's one of our favorites actually it's a it's a great round uh, there the guys who like that shoot a lot of it so that's a fun one to sell um, okay. explain what you're sure so over here what we have going on is our bulk ammunition uh, area. This is all finished product, ready to be shipped, ready to be sold at a show, ready to go to a range customer, uh, etc. So all of the bags we sell are 500 rounds. Um, they all include a desiccant pack. You can't really see this one because yep. it's underneath the tags, but there's a, a desiccant pack in here. These are mostly moisture tight. Uh, the, the bags here, six mil plastic, so you could throw this right into your ammo can and sealed in the pack bag. Pack it away and right, pack it away for a rainy day. Correct. Uh, everybody packs their ammo with desiccant, uh, so we figured we'll do that as well. It makes sense. Um, you can see, as I had mentioned earlier, everything has a lot number, so this bag uh, has the lot identified. If we have an issue, we can immediately identify, pull other items out from the same lot if we have uh, repeated issues follow up with the suppliers, etc. And then you you manufacture ammo for other companies, correct? Uh, correct, yeah. So one aspect of our business model is uh, being a contract manufacturer for others. So uh, there are a couple of companies that are in, uh, in the space of preparedness, uh, preppers. Uh, they, they sell products that are related to the same market of guns and ammo, but they they don't have expertise manufacturing ammunition. 
Uh, so what we do is we manufacture the ammunition for them. They sell it through their website. Uh, we manufacture it. They tell us when we, we, they have orders through their website. Uh, we box it up, put their label on it. Um, we always identify ourselves as the manufacturer of origin for product liability purposes, ATF compliance. Uh, but aside from that, their customers see it as their product under their brand, which is beneficial to their brand. Uh, and to us, it's beneficial because we're, this is our expertise. So we want to be the best at what we do, allow others to be the best at what they do, and uh, everybody benefits from a, from a business perspective.